Last year I reviewed the Lynx 2 modern replacement screen from Ben Venn. It was an excellent upgrade, but it involved a lot of wires and soldering. Ben Venn wanted to make this easier and has developed a solderless version. We have the new version right here and we're going to install it right now. Mark fixes stuff. This drop in screen can be installed in a Lynx 2 with zero soldering. There's now just a simple to fit ribbon cable. We have a really shiny Lynx 2 here to install it into. The studio lights show up some of the dust inside the unit, but we can clean that. Before we open the console, we should first test to see if it's in working order. I have a suitable DC power plug for the Lynx. We can use my bench supply, that way we can see how much current the console draws with the old screen and then the new screen. The polarity of the plug needs to be centre positive. I check this cable with continuity mode on my multimeter first. Powering on, we can see the supply is set for 12 volts. The Lynx 2 requires 9 volts, so we set that on the panel. Slip a game into its rear. Pop in the power plug. And this wildcat purrs into life. As usual, the Lynx screen is pretty painful to use or even record on the camera. The contrast wheel does little to help, but at least we can see the console is working from the power supply jack. Using the stock screen is a bit eye-watering these days, the sound is fine. With everything original, the console draws about a quarter of an amp or 250 milliamps. OK, power off and new screen in. We'll use a cloth to protect the face of the console. We need to remove the rubbers. Gently hook the edge of the strip and get a grip. Then gently pull it off. We can see that someone has been inside this console before. We do the same for the other grip and put both safely aside. Time to grab my tool and start screwing. Put any screws safely to one side. The other screws didn't want to come out past the torn tape, so I just unscrewed them and left them waiting in the case. After removing the battery cover, we're ready to lift the back of the Lynx 2 off. There's a single black screw holding the battery tray. Once this is removed, we can take the battery tray out. We put it to one side. Gently disconnect the two ribbon cables. Don't just pull them, they have locking collars, so unlock them to remove the ribbons without damaging the delicate contacts. When the collar is open, the control ribbon comes free easily. Then we do the same for the display ribbon. Next, unplug the two wire speaker cable. The last connection is the fluorescent lamp that illuminates the old screen. Simply pull it out and put the board to one side. There are four small screws to remove. Keep these handy because we'll need them in a moment to secure the 3D printed frame for the new screen. After the last screw, we can lift the original screen assembly out of the console. Let's do a first pass dusting. Always use a non-abrasive lint-free cloth to avoid scratching the screen plastic. 
After an air dusting it's looking a lot cleaner. Ok, we have the alignment frame and the screen itself. Inside the screen bag we have the custom Benven LCD panel. The new controller board sport this ribbon socket. The corresponding ribbon is in the anti-static bag. This replaces the original install's 12 soldered wires. To install the LCD, first remove the plastic film, then place the screen into the front of the case as shown. Holding the controller cable out of the way, place the printed frame into the front of the case. The screw holes will only match the right way around. Put the screws you removed from the old screen assembly back into place. Remember to turn the screw counterclockwise at first to drop into the plastic thread and don't just screw hard and recklessly damaging the hole. Don't over tighten the screws, just finger tight is enough. With the screen guide in place the LCD shouldn't move. With the LCD panel in place we need to look at the main board next. This inductor needs to be removed from the board. Ben Ben says you can just rock the coil until the legs snap. I'm going to desolder mine because I have the equipment here. With the inductor out of the board the high voltage circuit is disabled. I've already tested the capacitors in the 5 volt regulation circuit and they're both working properly. So let's connect the screen. Ensuring the socket collar is open, insert the ribbon cable and make sure it slides all the way into the slot. Then lock the cable firmly into place by pushing the collar down. Well it's certainly easier than soldering all of those pins. There is one piece of optional soldering. A single wire from the backlight pad to the main board to enable the optional button control. Of course you know I can't resist doing it but you don't have to. Attaching this wire will allow the brightness to be controlled in step. Holding the button will also toggle the optional scan lines. Brightness is still controllable using a contrast wheel even without the wire. With the collar open we gently place the control ribbon back into its socket and close the collar. Unlock the ribbon cable on the LCD by opening its brown flap. Then push our flat cable all the way into the socket and lock it into place by pushing down on the flap. Let's just thread our optional cable back under the board so we can connect it in a bit. Then we need to reconnect the speaker, it just pushes on. Now we can cut and solder the optional control wire. Let's make this a touch shorter. Strip the sheath and tin the end. and solder it to the pin, top row and fourth from the left. Now we can have a quick test. We'll use Chip's challenge again because we know it works. Next we insert the power. Press the on button. And Chip's challenge blips into life. The backlight button works as well. Let's put this back together. There's still some dust inside that I'd like to remove. We can do this by popping off the front bezel. By gently pushing the tabs of the bezel out we can remove it from the console. The inner black frame is a separate part so don't drop it. With the glass off we can give it a really good clean. Don't use anything that could scratch the surface. 
The new screen gets the air duster treatment and we put the black frame back in after dusting that off as well. Making sure to line the power LED marking up with the LED on the console, we put the bezel back on. Another quick buff. Before we wrestle the battery tray back into place. and secure it with this single black screw. Make sure that this lug is over the top of the main board. And place the back of the console on, ensuring the case closes properly. Then a spot of light screwing. Not too hard on the old screw holes please. Replace the battery cover. and slip on a rubber. You can refresh the double sided tape on these, but this tape is still sticky enough. Don't use anything too sticky in case you want to dust inside the screen in future. Power in. Button pushed. And here we go. Chip's challenge plays like a dream with no motion blur. The Gummy Crew have kindly found my El Cheapo SD Lynx Multicart, also from Ben Ven. Thanks guys! Blue Lightning has never been more playable. This is a truly impressive game from a handheld of this era. With the Benven screen installed, the console is only drawing around 150 milliamps. That's compared with the 250 milliamps that it was drawing before. Very impressive. Bill and Ted's excellent adventure plays like a fledgling version of Toe Jam and Earl when we're looking back. It's still a challenge though. Alien vs Predator could have been amazing if it had progressed past the tech demo stage. Nothing works. Shame. Battlezone 2000 remains as fun today as it has been since its original arcade heyday. Bubble Trouble is still the top game in the elderly lady trapped in a bubble and floating down the drain genre. I'm not even going to pretend I know what's going on. There's a lot of good games for the Lynx. Checkered Flag was ahead of its time. There's even a tape mode version of Gauntlet that lets you play as Chip from Chip's Challenge. I'd like to say a big thanks to the guys at Ben Ven for supplying this kit for the video. And a massive and grateful thanks to all my amazing Patreon supporters, without whom these videos would not be possible. You can join them at patreon.com forward slash stuff. Thanks for watching this video. Why not try one of these next? They're Gummy Crew approved.